This is KGW News at 11. And thanks for joining us this Friday night. I'm David Molko. Tonight, postal inspectors are offering a $50,000 reward for details that lead to the arrest and conviction of the armed man who robbed a mail carrier. Alma McCarty with our top story. On Tuesday, just after 3 p.m., a USPS mail carrier on their normal route was ambushed. A gun held to the back of their head as they were trying to deliver mail near Northeast 10th and Hancock in Portland. The suspect demanded the mailbag and took off. So I was able to get the satchel or the scanner and some, some postal keys. There's a lot of money in the mail on any given day. Adam Sale leads the team of postal inspectors for the state of Oregon. The carrier attempted to follow them for a little bit, but you know, fearing for their safety uh, was kind of let the, they weren't able to follow him for very long. Although not physically harmed, Sale said the trauma suffered by this carrier is significant. When this mail carrier whose assigned route is in that same area has to go back there the next day, that can be a very uh, emotional and difficult situation for them. Uh, anytime you're a victim of a violent crime, anytime someone holds a gun to your head, uh, I think that has an effect on everybody. As the United States Postal Inspection Service works to recover all stolen mail in this case, inspectors are also offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to an arrest and conviction of the suspect or suspects. Sale said the mail carrier had limited details about the robber, but described him as a man around 5'6 to 5'8 with rain stubble on his face and wearing a fishing hat. We need the assistance of the community to help us identify this person and, and get them into custody and bring them to justice. Neighbors along this stretch said they were saddened, but unfortunately not surprised to hear about this incident. Postal inspectors want the reward money to send a message about violence against their team. We won't tolerate it. If you do violence against the letter carrier, the full force of the Postal Inspection Service will be upon you and we will track you down until we find you. Now, clearly they are taking this very seriously and there is a number you can call plus a case number that you can reference. We will have the details on KGW.com shortly. The information that you provide is confidential. Postal inspectors also urging the public not to try and apprehend the suspect on their own. David? Alma McCarty reporting tonight. Thank you, Alma. Let's get you caught up now on tonight's other headlines. The man accused of arson at Vancouver Mayor Ann McInerney Ogle's house has now been charged with breaking into her home one day earlier. Court records show Aiden Michael Murray has been charged with residential burglary. That's on top of the arson and malicious mischief charge he is already facing. Murray is scheduled to be arraigned next Thursday. Oregon State Representative James Hee will reportedly not face criminal charges. The Oregonian reporting the news from the Clackamas County DA. You may remember he spent the night in jail after police responded to a disturbance at the county fair last month, much of it recorded by their body cams. He said it all started when a woman asked him to put out a cigarette and leave. After police arrived, he was arrested on suspicion of disorderly conduct and interfering with a peace officer. And Oregon and Washington are getting a chunk of new federal grant money aimed at tackling the opioid epidemic. Oregon will get more than 20 million, 15 of that going to the Oregon Health Authority. Washington will receive more than 27 million, among other things. Those dollars will go toward expanding access to drug treatment and recovery support, as well as making the life-saving drug naloxone or Narcan more accessible. This all comes just a day after Multnomah County deputies seized 92,000 fentanyl pills during a traffic stop. Deaths from fentanyl in Oregon climbed 600 percent between 2019 and 2021. Well, Oregon, by the way, 50th out of 50 states when it comes to access to substance abuse treatment for those who need it. So this week on a special edition of Straight Talk, Fighting the Flood of Fentanyl. It is a special that focuses on saving lives by sparking a conversation with teenagers and young people. You're going to hear from Carrie Cohen, the mother of 16 year old Griffin Hoffman, who was poisoned by a counterfeit prescription pill in Portland earlier this year. Here is part of what she told me. My, my whole approach was, um, and his father's, was that he was going to experiment, that was to be expected, and that what mattered to me most was open discussion, and that he was never going to get in trouble. Um, and so we talked at length about all sorts of things. He wanted to hear about, like, 
my drug experiences growing up. Mm -hmm. He wanted to hear like, you know, about all that stuff. And were you pretty open with him about totally, all that? Totally, okay. totally. I did so many, I mean, I, had fentanyl been around in the ways that it is now, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. There's no way. You know, the way that I talk about it with a lot of the young people is it really is Russian roulette. And that any, and, and part of it, and you guys can probably speak to that too, right? These pills are not standardized. They're not coming out with, you know, so one can have a little bit of something and another can have lethal doses. In this crisis that we're in, law enforcement is essential, prosecution is essential, drug treatment is essential, but what is equally, if not more, essential is families talking to their kids. Well, that is federal prosecutor Scott Karen. Also on this panel, Cam Strom. He's the former head of the DEA in Oregon. Four parents with a united message they hope you will share with your family and loved ones. Stopping the flood of fentanyl, that's a special edition of Straight Talk up right now on KGW.com. And speaking of high school kids, the crowds are cheering, the stadium lights are shining bright, but what happens to high school football and those Friday night lights when there's no one to referee? Or Catherine Cook takes us through the tackles and touchdowns. Do you love football? Call it a pitch. Do you want to have the best seat in the house? On the gridiron. Do you want to give back to your community? To be a high school football official. We're out there trying to do the best we can to keep people safe, to keep the game fun with good sportsmanship, and to keep it fair. Nobody wants that more than we do. Rob Fuller's been doing it for 21 years and loves it. You have to be ready from the starting kickoff to the final buzzer for anything to happen. But what they weren't ready for happened in the off season a major shortage among officials. Before the pandemic, the Portland Football Officials Association had 190 in their rotation. Now they're down to 150. To compensate, each school is moving at least one of their games off of Friday night. Your traditional Thursday night, Friday night has now become Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and some Saturdays. It just becomes unfeasible. Carl Hessler is commissioner of Portland Football Officials Association. He says the training window for officials is six weeks long, starting in July. You make anywhere from 45 to $65 a game, and candidates should have a flexible job schedule, commitment to integrity, and good people skills. Every conceivable class and subclass of person is represented, and yet we all come to together to be officials for the kids. It's a, it's a good thing. And then there's the bad thing, verbal abuse, harassment, and other unacceptable behavior by some coaches, parents, and fans. This month, the Oregon School and Activities Association called it a trend that must be stopped. They cited a national survey showing it's the top reason high school sports officials are quitting across the country. And we come out here and do this because we love it. And we come out here and we give it our absolute best to try to be perfect. At least, that's the goal. I would love for people to know that no one wants to get it right more than we do. Catherine Cook, KGW News.